In the following presentation, you will be proving that triangles are congruent by using flowcharts. In this first example, we look at our givens. We've got AD congruent to CD, CB congruent to AB, and we're trying to prove the two triangles are congruent. I like to start proofs by putting everything in my picture. So I'm going to start with the given AD congruent to CD by using tick marks on those sides. Next given that I have is CB congruent to AB. So again, I'm going to put tick marks. I have to use a different set of tick marks this time. And that's the only givens that I can put in my picture. Now I'm going to try and figure out why the triangles are congruent. I've got a pair of sides here. So those two are congruent to each other. Then I've got another pair of sides here. So there's a pair that's congruent. And lastly, they share DB. So DB is going to be the same in both. So that's my last one. And now I can see that I've got side, 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 side. So I've got, that will be my triangle congruence. So you have to make sure that you have side, side, side in your flow chart. Side, side, side as your final reason. With most of these proofs, you can do them in any order that you want. I'm going to start with my givens. Most of the time that's the easiest. So AD congruent to CD given. CB congruent to AB given. And lastly, I have to put DB congruent to db in there by the reflexive property. Again, that just means basically if you flip the triangle on top of itself, they would be congruent in both triangles. Anytime you see something that they share, you'll use the reflexive property. So now I've got everything I need and I can put in my triangle congruence statement in the last section. In this next example, got a couple of givens, AC congruent to EC, BC to DC, and we want to prove the two triangles are congruent. Our givens are already in our picture, so we don't have to do that. So our next step is to try and find anything else in the picture that's congruent we have vertical angles here. So I'm going to put a little half circle on my vertical angles. That's all I can see in the picture that would be congruent. So now I think about what triangle congruence theorem to use. Have a side and a side in both. Then I've got a second pair in both. And lastly, I have an angle. So now I can see that I'm going to be using side, angle, side, side, angle, side in both. So again, make sure that you do side, angle, side in your proof. So now I'm going to go ahead and put everything in my proof. One of my sides was given. So the side needs to go in one of the side bubbles. Okay, and then mostly, again, most of these proofs you can do in what order you would like. So I am going to put the other side down here at the bottom. And now I need to put my angle in. Sorry, forgot to write given. 
Make sure that when you name angles, you name them in the correct order. So if I name this one here, I'm going to start at A, C, B. So that's the order that I'm going to go in. Remember, the vertex has to be at the middle. Then if I started with A, I have to start with E over here, E to C to D. And that will be how you name that. And again, we said vertical angles in the beginning. So that's your reason. And now we've got everything. Statements and our reasons. So our last step. Name. Use the triangle congruence theorem. In this next example, we've got RV. This little symbol means perpendicular, so they intersect at a right angle to segment SK. And then we've got a pair of congruent segments, SR congruent to KR. So again, I'm going to put everything in my picture. So RV right here, SK is this long one. So it means that I've got a perpendicular angle right there. And I also have one here. It's a straight angle has to add to 180, so they both have to be 90 degrees. And I already have SR and KR in my picture, so that's nice. So now I'm just going to go ahead and figure out what triangle congruence theorem it could be. Now the thing that you always want to check, if you've got a right triangle, check and see first if HL will work. A lot of kids will forget about HL, but I always just check and see if I've got a right triangle, check and see first if I've got a hypotenuse congruent to a hypotenuse and a leg congruent to a leg. So here's my side across in the right angle is my hypotenuse. So I've got a hypotenuse congruent to the other hypotenuse. And then I also have a leg here. They share that side. So that has to be, excuse me, that has to be the leg. So I do have HL. I'm going to go ahead and put that in. All right. And now I'm going to go ahead and put everything in my picture. Excuse me, not my picture, my proof. So I just have to make sure that I have HL in there. This one up here will be saved for this given. I need to put that in so that I know it's a right triangle. So I need to say RV perpendicular to SK. Now I need to put my hypotenuse in. My hypotenuse was SR and KR. So I say SR congruent to KR. That one was also given to us. And then I have to say my leg. Again, once they share something, you've got the reflexive property. So you just say it's congruent to itself. And now I've got what I need. So last step, just put your triangle congruence statement. And that's it.